In this video, we are going to discuss about breast cancer. Breast cancer, or breast carcinoma, is an uncontrolled growth of epithelial cells in the breast. It is the most common cancer in women worldwide, with a risk of one in eight women developing breast cancer. This may also develop in men, but with much lower risk of about one in 1,000. Now, before we continue, let's have a brief recap of the anatomy and physiology of the breasts. The breasts are located between the second and sixth ribs over the pectoralis muscle from the sternum to the mid-auxiliary line. An area of breast tissue called tail of spans extends into the oxilla. Fascial bonds called Cooper ligaments support the breast on the chest wall. The inframammary fold is a ridge of fat at the bottom of the breast. Each breast contains 12 to 20 cone-shaped lobes, which are made up of glandular tissue. The glandular tissue, which makes the milk, is composed of lobules that attach to ductules that further extend to the milk ducts and to the nipple pore. Each of the lobules have a grape-like structure called the alveoli. These are modified sweat glands surrounded by a basement membrane made up of collagen. Layers of alveolar cells secrete breast milk into the lumen, which is the space in the center of the gland. Myoepithelial cells that wrap around the alveolus squeeze and push the milk out of the lumen, into the milk duct, and out to the nipple pore. Surrounding the glandular tissue is called the stroma, which is composed of adipose or fat tissue. This makes up the majority of the breast. Men also have breast tissue, but they lack milk-secreting alveoli. There is a network of tiny lymphatic vessels that surround the breasts, which drains the lymph, a fluid containing cellular waste products and white blood cells. These lymphatic vessels mainly drains into the lymph nodes located in the auxilla. There is no single specific cause of breast cancer. However, a combination of genetic, hormonal, and possibly environmental factors may increase the risk of its development. The cells of glandular tissue have receptors for certain hormones such as estrogen, progesterone, and prolactin. These hormones stimulate the alveolar cells that divide and increase in number, which makes the lobule enlarge. Without these hormones, the alveolar cells cannot survive and undergo apoptosis, or programmed cell death. During menstrual cycle, there is increased secretion of estrogen and progesterone from the ovaries, and after menstruation, that secretion decreases. As a result, during every menstrual cycle, the alveolar cells undergo division and apoptosis. Each time cells divide, there's a chance that a genetic mutation will occur and a mutation can lead to a tumor formation. So with more menstrual cycles, there is increased risk of tumor formation. This then gives the risk factors such as early menarch and late menopause. Hormonal factors from pregnancy also include nulliparity and late age at first full-term pregnancy. Similarly, Medications containing estrogen also increase the risk of breast cancer. Other environments or risk factors like ionizing radiation from chest x-rays and CT scans may also increase the risk of breast cancer. As stated previously, breast cancer can be genetically inherited, resulting in significant risk. Approximately 5 to 10% of breast cancer cases have been linked to specific gene mutations. Normally, the breast cancer gene, or BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes, protect you from getting certain cancers by slowing down cell division and make cells die if they divide uncontrollably, hence also known as tumor suppressor genes. Mutations in BRCA1 or BRCA2 genes prevent them from working properly. In males, breast cancer is usually caused by inherited mutations in the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. Some breast cancers also have mutations in the ERBB2 gene that increases human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 or HER2, which when activated promotes the growth of cells. 
Once a cancer-causing mutation occur, the affected cell, which is most commonly an epithelial cell that lines the ducts or the lobules, begins to grow and replicate out of control, forming a tumor. This tumor, also called in situ carcinoma, is initially localized within the basement membrane of the alveoli and can be of two types. The first type is called ductal carcinoma in situ, or DCIS, where tumor cells grow from the wall of the ducts into the lumen. If left untreated, DCIS can over time cross the basement membrane to become invasive ductal carcinoma. Also, cancer cells from DCIS can migrate along the lactiferous or milk ducts and through the pore onto the skin over the nipple. This is called the Paget disease of the nipple. The second type is called lobular carcinoma in situ, or LCIS, where clusters of tumor cells grow within the lobules without invading the ducts, causing the affected alveolar to enlarge. Unlike DCIS, LCIS doesn't cross the basement membrane over time. Breast cancer can cause complications such as local inflammation, which causes damage to the suspensor ligaments and lactiferous ducts, resulting in their fibrosis. The cancer can invade nearby tissues like pectoral muscles and the anterior skin. In males, breast tissue is thin, which makes it easier for the cancer to spread to underlying tissues. Cancer cells can also enter and block thin lymphatic vessels, which causes lymph to build up in the interstitial space. Usually, the fluid buildup would cause swelling, but in this case, the attachment of suspensory ligaments doesn't allow the skin to stretch. So, the skin becomes thickened and dimpled like an orange peel called poo derange appearance. Finally, the tumor cells can spread via the blood to the spine, brain, and bone or via the lymph to the auxiliary lymph nodes and other breasts. The first symptom of breast cancer is a hard, painless lump or swelling, which is most commonly in the upper and outer part of the breast. Fibrosis of lactiferous ducts and suspensory ligaments cause retraction or pulling in of the nipples. The breast becomes immobile or fixed or stuck into the chest wall due to infiltration if cancer cells spread into the pectoral muscles. There may also be swelling present under the armpit if cancer has spread to the auxiliary lymph nodes. When Paget disease is present, it can cause itching, redness, rusting, and discharge from the nipple. Diagnosis of breast cancer usually begins by feeling a breast lump, either by self-breast examination or physical examination by the healthcare professional. Breast cancer can be treated effectively when it's detected early in the course of the disease. That is why regular screening with mammography is done in high-risk individuals. In addition, imaging using ultrasound and MRI may be done to detect the tumor. Finally, a biopsy of the swelling or a fine needle aspiration and cytology where fluid from the swelling is taken may be done to confirm the diagnosis. Other diagnostic tests may also be performed, which are chest x-ray, CT scan, PET scan, bone scans, blood work such as tumor markers. To determine the risk of breast cancer, it is staged using the TNM system. T for tumor indicates the size of the tumor or whether or not it has grown in nearby areas. N for nodes, describes the degree to which the cancer has spread to nearby lymph nodes, particularly to auxiliary lymph nodes, and M for metastasis, which indicates the degree to which the cancer has spread to other sites or has metastasized. Each of these categories is ranked from 0 to 4, with 4 being the most severe. The combinations of these substages then determine the stage group, which are assigned as stage 0 to 4. Treatment for breast cancer is based on the type and stage of the cancer, but commonly, this involves surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and hormonal therapy. Localized tumors are removed surgically by partial mastectomy, where the affected part is removed. And larger tumors, which have spread to nervi tissue, are removed by total mastectomy, where the entire breast is removed. In addition, 
Nearby structures like lymph nodes may also be removed if the cancer has metastasized to them. Radiation therapy is used to decrease the chance of a local recurrence in the breast by eradicating residual microscopic cancer cells. Chemotherapy involves the use of anti-cancer agents in addition to other treatments to delay or prevent a recurrence of breast cancer. Hormone therapy is used when tumor cells have hormone receptors like estrogen and HER2 and may include medications which block the formation or effects of estrogen. Selective estrogen receptors modulators such as tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitors such as arnestrozole, letrozole, and eximestane may be used. Nursing diagnosis and intervention for breast cancer. Grieving related to anticipated loss of physiological well-being and perceived potential death of patient. With this, the nurse is expected to Expect initial shock and disbelief following diagnosis of cancer and traumatizing procedures. Assess patient and SO for stage of grief currently being experienced. Explain process as appropriate. Encourage verbalization of thoughts or concerns and accept expressions of sadness, anger, and rejection. Acknowledge normality of these feelings. Provide open, non-judgmental environment and use therapeutic communication skills. Be honest and do not give false hope while providing emotional support. Acute pain related to disease process and side effects of various cancer therapy agents. With this, the nurse is expected to assess location of pain, frequency, duration, intensity using numeric rating scale, provide non-pharmacological comfort measures and diversional activities. Evaluate and be aware of painful effects of particular therapies. Provide information to patient and significant other about what to expect. Administer analgesics as prescribed and evaluate pain relief and control at regular intervals. Risk of infection related to invasive procedure. With this, the nurse is expected to Promote good hand washing procedures by staff and visitors, screen and limit visitors who may have infections, and place and reverse isolation as indicated. Assess all systems and vital signs for signs and symptoms of infection on a continual basis. Emphasize personal hygiene. Monitor complete blood count with differential WBC and granulocyte count and platelets as indicated. Lastly, promote adequate rest and exercise periods. What is the prognosis of breast cancer? In general, the smaller the tumor appears, the better the prognosis. Prognosis also depends on the extent of spread of the breast cancer. The five-year survival rate is approximately 88% for a stage 1 breast cancer and 15% for a stage 4 breast cancer. The most common route of regional spread is the auxiliary lymph nodes. Distant metastasis can affect any organ, but the most common site are bone, lung, liver, pleura, adrenals, skin, and the brain. So that is all. Thank you for listening.